Alright, so in this video we're going to be talking about the gradient operator which is often called del operator or the nabla operator and it is just this inverted triangle symbol that you may have seen in multivariable calculus when we talked about the directional derivative of a multivariable function so you may recall that if you have something like a, a function of two variables let me just draw a, a bunch of axes here if you have a function of two variables, say f of x and y, then that just represents a surface in three dimensions. And we know from multivariable calculus that if you were to find the gradient at some point, well, the most general way of doing that is to basically take the gradient of that function, which is just the del operator applied onto the function itself. And we know that this actually gives us a vector result. So we have uh, the partial of f with respect to x in the case of the two-dimensional function and then partial of f with respect to y but we know that we this is very easily extended to multiple dimensions so higher dimensions just by extending the number of components in it so one of the interesting things that you may have thought about is that why do we take a scalar function because this is just a scalar field it, we just have a bunch of scalar points on that surface and if you take the gradient of that, that actually gives you a vector. Well, the reason is, as we discussed, we have a bunch of different directions in which the slope can occur. So basically, when it comes to a surface, the, the slope at a specific point is not as, it's not basically defined in the same way as the slope on a curve. We can actually have an infinite number of directions in which we can calculate the slope at a single point. So what this operation is actually giving you is it is giving you the slope of the function that is maximum along each of those directions. And we know that we can actually take, um, if we take this vector field, well, this is just going to point to you in the, in the direction of the, where the slope is the maximum. So this is one of the properties that we may not have touched upon when we did some multivariable calculus before. But now that we're doing vector calculus, I think it's quite important to bring this point once again um, and just to talk about the general properties of what happens when you have a scale function, you take a gradient operator of it, and that gives you a vector field. So essentially, this results in a vector field, which we're going to call big F. All right, so basically this is what we're going to have. So just to give you a simple example, let's consider the following function let's say you have a paraboloid that has the following function alright and now what we're going to do is we're going to have <coughs> well if we plot it on the XYZ space we know that this function looks like this and they just extends to infinity on sides but base the basic shape is like this it's like a parabola in three dimensions now if we were to plot the actual gradient at any point let's say we choose this point obviously the gradient is going to happen at a bunch of different points so we don't really know in which direction we're pointed so what this is going to give us is the direction of the the vector essentially it's going to give us the direction in which the maximum slope at that point occurs so if we take the gradient of this function then what we're going to get is the following, we're going to get a vector field defined by 2x, 2y. Okay? And now if we were to plot this vector field on the xy plane, we're going to have x here, y here, or x and y. And now we're going to have 0 here. Then at point 1, we're going to have a vector of magnitude 2 that goes on like that. So basically, that would be the point here so basically at this point here the gradient is just going to be pointing in this direction but you can imagine that it's actually going like that so this is going to give us that and then if we do the same for any other points well we're going to have this then this and then this here and then you can imagine that this is just going to go off like that so this is the, the general vector field that we would get from this particular case. And the interesting thing you notice is that the, these vectors are going to start getting a lot longer as you move away. 
and the main reason for that you notice that there is actually a very interesting connection between these two things so essentially you have a vector field that you can pretty much superimpose here so you can draw the bunch of the vector field going off like that on the xy plane and then the vectors keep getting longer and longer as you move away from the from the origin and you might imagine well these are just pointing in the direction where the maximum slope happens at that point at each of those points on that surface and the magnitude of the vectors on that vector field are going to give you the magnitude of that maximum slope so for example at some point here if you were to plot the vector there it would be something like this and then the actual length of that vector is going to tell you how large that um, gradient is going to be so obviously the gradient is is increasing as you go as you move further away from the origin and then that is reflected into the vector field here so essentially this is going to increase more and more the vectors are going to get larger the more you move away from the origin which reflects a change in the gradient so that's a quite an interesting case now what what would happen let's say let's say we had a different case let's say we had something like this let's have this scalar function which is now going to be an inverted paraboloid plus y squared all right so now we're going to get the following we're going to get the gradient and this is going to be equal to minus 2x minus 2y so we know that this thing is just going to look like a concave down paraboloid so it's going to go like that so this is our set x and y so it's just going to continue to infinity in all directions so let's see what the vector field of this looks like so x and y now let's start off at zero we don't have anything now let's start off one here okay so if we put one in here this actually is going to be pointing to the left and now here at minus one if we put a minus one in here this is going to be pointing to the right and then let's see what's actually happening here so let's move further away let's say we try something like minus three put minus three in here this is going to be pointing to the right but it's obviously going to get be a lot larger and then if we do the same thing here then at three we're just going to have a vector pointing in the other direction and then you can imagine that the same thing is just going to happen here so basically you're going to have a vector field that is actually pointing towards the origin now so all the vectors that you draw here so for example if you do uh, let's do one and one here so if you put one in here that gives you minus two so basically you're going to have minus two units along the x direction so that's going to move something like that and then you're going to have y so if you put something like actually that gonna, that's going to move like that and if you put one in here that's going to move down so the vector is going to go like that now if you do one and one here then that's going to give you minus 2 and minus 2 so the vector is going to be pointing downwards like that if you do it here you have both negative numbers so that gives you a positive number like that and then here so you can imagine that as you move further away the vectors are still getting longer but now you notice that the vector field is pointing towards the center towards the origin so what this is telling you is that your the direction in which the the gradient is pointing is not going towards the origin so your your vectors are now pointing in like this but still the gradient is getting smaller and smaller so obviously that is why the vectors keep getting longer and longer the, the further away from the center you move but this is the general idea behind that and the really interesting thing about this is that there is some very um, nice results from physics that that are actually derived from this so one of the things that that we can actually use this for is to derive the relation between the electric field um, and then the, the potential of, of a particular function so the potential energy or the uh, electric potential of a particular particle or system so we normally we write it like this so imagine that v is your potential 
and this could be anything it's a scalar function so basically the potential would be something like this it might look like paraboloid or it might look like a sphere or something like that if you take the gradient of the potential then what that's gonna give you is you're gonna get a vector field and that vector field is actually going to be the electric field so that's a really interesting thing that we're going to explore later on but I think it's a, it's a really nice thing to know and actually this should be um, negative here so that's the relation between the two it, it is a relation that we have and basically you're taking a, a scalar function taking the grain of it becomes a vector field and that vector field happens to be the electric field so there are some nice relationships that we can draw between those things and hopefully this has given you a little bit more intuition as to what the gradient of a scalar function is and why we need to draw this relation with vector fields.